Welcome to 2025 Physics Practical on Optics. And um, remember, I have done a series of experiments on this. So that is why I've not really bothered doing a new one. Not I don't want to do actually, but then I have so many things handling. So but I, what I want to show you is the best way to handle this, even when you don't do the practical. So this is a cheat for those of you who like to do shortcuts. So if you're ready, let's get started. Remember the right thing to do. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, and also share it to other students for us to be able to ask these people. All right, because I know that most of the schools, uh, why does not know that, the officials don't know that, most of the schools don't even have the apparatus to do this. Even when the apparatus is that, it can't go around for all the students to use. So watch this video, and let's see how it start. Okay, the first thing I want to do is, this is a rectangular block of A, B, C, D, and then this symbol, this sign you are seeing with this line, is the mirror place behind it. I'm also going to upload the video of how to do the practical. Then, this P1 and P2 is the pin which traces the, the incident ray. Why this is the normal? Angle 90. N, O is angle 90. Then, when you trace these pins, they will enter, deviate. This is the refractive ray. Why this is the refractive angle? Refractive angle, not reflect. Refractive angle. So when it enters here, it hits the interface between the glass and the air, and this is the mirror. Now, this mirror, we now reflect it back down here. So I know this is a combination of refraction, total internal reflection. So at this point, what we do is, there is this particular place. From here to here is going to be this R. This R is equal to this R because they are parallel. Because this line is parallel to this line. So this R is equal to this R. Now, remember, the question is going to say that we are going to have 10.0, 20.0, let's say 30.0, and 40.0. So whether they say 10, 15, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25, whatever they say, this is what you are going to have for incidents. All right. Now, when it enters here, remember, you refract. This same place will be the R. This place, because this angle, this R must be equal to this R, R according to the law of reflection. This angle must be equal to this angle because this is what the mirror has done. So when it comes here as well, this place is going to be R. Then this E must, not must, but if you perform the experiment, it will not be. So in order to ask them, because they may want to check that this is too perfect, in order to ask them, what you do is, if you are having I to be 10, E, you can say that E is 10.50. Right? Then 20 can be, you can say 20.10 and 30.20, maybe 40 point, you know, let's say five zero as well. So in order, you have done this in order to find a little deviation from what you already have. So having this and a little deviation from this is not going to let the examiner to know that you are actually manipulating it. And another one is this. Remember, whenever you are done with your table of values, you are also going to draw all these things, pierce the, the, your pin, Pierce your paper and pierce your paper in order to get all this P1 as if you did it. Then when you get to this point, this is, like I said, this is emergent ray and this is incident ray. This is the angle of refraction, which I've told you. Now, the question is, how do you now get this angle? Remember, this angle is theta and this angle is also theta. So, the, the this triangle, O, Q, O prime, they are isosceles triangles. So, see what I'm going to do. From here, to here is 7 cm. Why gave us? They gave us either 9 times 8, which means length times breadth, 9 times 8 or 7 times 7. So you will first measure from here to here and find the value. I'm using 7 cm in my own. Therefore, this place is also 7 cm. All right. So when you are done with that, let's go. Let's go. The first thing you are going to do is use Snell's law. What does Snell's law state? It says that the refractive index of, let's say, air to glass is equal to 1.5, and 
and the central sign of the incident, that means this angle here, all over the sign of the refraction, which is the angle here, all right? So when that is done, but we have already known that when light is passing from air to glass, it is given as 1.5. So I is already given us this. I'm going to have sine 10 all over sine R. So sine R is going to be sine 10 all over 1.5. Simply put, R is equal to sine inverse sine 10 all over 1.5. Once you do this, you have R. Okay, I will show you what to do. So this is the first formula you need. So what you'll be doing here is, for every 10, the next one, you remove this 10, put 20 for the 20, 30 for this side. You know, you just be changing 10 according to the values they gave you here. So another way I can write the formula is R is going to be sine inverse of sine I all over 1.5. So you'll be changing i for 10, 20, 30, 40, according to the values they gave you for i. So let me do for that one. So I'm going to say sine 10 divided by 1.5. So the value for... Oh, okay. So the value for r, I have gotten my r to be... 0.1158. So this is the value of R. Okay? In degree. This is the value of R. Alright. Now I have gotten R. To get theta, remember that theta, theta is equal to 2R. This is the second formula you need. You need the first, you need the second. So whatever you get as R, multiply it by 2. This my table is missing theta, please. So I'm going to put theta because I need theta. So I'm going to put theta somewhere here. Let me squeeze in theta here. Theta in degree. So theta here. I'm going to multiply this R by 2. So times 2, I have 0 0.2315. This is the value of my theta. All right. Let's confirm. So once I get R, R times R is giving me theta, the value of theta. Okay. So that is what it is going to be. So when I, R plus R is going to be this. R plus R is something as 2R. So I have my theta there. Okay. So the next thing I am going to do is to find D. How do I find D? Remember, I have gotten this place, which is 7. I know this value of R. Okay. And I can now find from here to here. So the last formula you need is to say that, D is equal to, all right, so I will say D. Let me call this place X, and this place is also X. Therefore, D is equal to 2X. That means X plus S is going to be the same thing as D. All right, so I am going to, since this is right angle triangle, I'm going to say this is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to say tan theta, no, not theta in this case, this is R and R is equal to opposite, which is X, over 7. Therefore, X is going to be 7 tan R. This is the third formula. Therefore, D is going to be 2X, and this is the last formula. So, you see what you do. So, once you are given a question, and you know, you know, not that if they combine mirror and glass, what you do is first, and they gave you this, and the question is like this, according to the way I set it up. What you will do is to use this formula to get R. Once you get R, multiply the R by 2 to get theta. Once you get theta, you go here and record your theta. All right? Once you record your theta here, you come here and find N 
you are looking for n, which is 0 0.235 divided by 2, then cos 0 0.1175. So this is 0 0.99, uh, which is 0 point, which is, I can say it's just <coughs> 1.000, okay, or 0, so four decimal places. So this is because this value divided by 2 is 0 0.7 something. Then cost of that thing is giving you this 1. Okay? So the next thing you will do after getting this and getting cost, the next thing you do is to go to E. Remember E is same thing as this. And I told you how to change these values. You just say sign 10.5, which is going to give you 0 0.1822. Right? So how do you get D? Like I explained, you just come here to get D, you just say X is equal to 7 tan R. What is R? This is R. Tan, tan this, uh, tan R. That is my R, okay? Yes, this is my R, okay? Tan 0 0.1158. Then you get a value. Then times it by 7. You multiply by 7, you are not, you are not having... 0 0.0141. So you have filled this table. Okay? Let's do the second to fill the next table. The next thing I'm going to do, let's go together. If you have your calculator, you can work up, work, work it together. I'm having this. The first one is D, but I can't get D until I get theta. Alright? Okay, let's get that. So the first thing I will do is sign. So the next one, let's work together. This is R sine of R. The next one is 20. So this I is 20. So sine 20 is equal to 0 0.3420. Now divide the value by 1.5. You now have 0 point, 0 0.2280. Right? Then multiply it by 2. When you multiply it by 2, you have 0 0.45. So this angle here. 0. Point, which is theta, 0. 0.4560. That is theta. I've gotten my theta. Now, this is my theta. The next thing I'm going to do is to, uh, after getting my theta, okay, I, I will find what my R was. Let me find what my R, let me go back and say sine 20 divided by 1.5. 0 0.220, that is R, 0 0.220. So I'm going to say X is going to be tan, tan 0 0.2280. So I will say times 7. That is going to give me my X. So I'm going to say tan 0 0.2280. Then times 7. So what I have is 0 0.02785565. Alright, so that is X. Then multiply it by 2. Multiply it by 2 to get D. So D is, my D is 0 0.0557. That is my D. I mean, from here to here. So you see, the value is increasing. The value is increasing. How do I get my M, which is sine sine 20.1. So I'm having 0 0.3437 to the nearest four decimal places, right? And um, N, how do I get my N? I have already gotten my theta. So let me say um, 0 0.4. 560 divided by 2, then cos 0 0.228. Yes, so I'm having. No, no, no. Let's let me check it again. So this value now is 0 0.4560. This is theta divided by 2. 
then I have 0 0.228. So cos 0 0.228 is also giving me 1.0000. All right. So, <clears throat> so this is how, what you're going to do until you fill your table. Thank you for being part of the class. Always hit the subscribe button, like this video, and comment. Have a nice day.